Mars artifacts of Mars, and it's like you said, they're getting kookier by the minute. Uh, the story is about how did life begin dividing droplets could hold the answer. Really? Collaboration of physics and biologists in Germany who found a simple mechanism that might have enabled liquid droplets to evolve in delivering cells er in early Earth's primordial soup. Origin of life researchers have praised the minimalization of the idea. Raman Glustin, and, sorry, professor of theoretical physics in the University of Oxford, who was not involved in research, called it big achievement and suggested general phenom phenomenonology of life formation is a lot easier than one might think. Oh, really? Central question about the origins of life has been how first cells arrived from primitive precursors. What were these precursors? dubbed protocells and how they come alive. Proponents of the membrane first hypothesis have argued that a fatty acid membrane was needed to trail chemicals of life and incubate biological complexity. But how could something as complex as a membrane start to self replicate and proliferate, allowing evolution to act on it? In other words, there's nothing, no sack to contain all these stu this stuff. In 1924, Alexander Operan Aperin, the Russian biochemist who first envisioned a hot, briny price primordial soup as a source of life's humble, humble beginnings, proposed that mystery protocells may have been liquid droplets, naturally forming membrane-free containers that concentrate chemicals, and therefore foster reactions. How are they going to do that if they're in the ocean? This is kooky. In recent years, droplets have been found to perform a large range of essential functions inside modern cells, reviving operands long forgotten speculation about their role in evolutionary history. No, they didn't forget it. They dragged it out. Like get dragging out of old rat carcass. But neither he nor anyone else could explain how droplets might have proliferated, growing, dividing, and in the process evolving into the first cells. Now, new work by David Zwicker and collaborators at Max Planck Institute for the Physics of Complex Systems the Max Planck Institute of Molecular Cellular Biology and Genetics, both addressed and suggest an answer. The scientists study the physics of chemically active droplets, which cycle chemicals in on the surrounding fluid, and suggest discover that these droplets tend to grow in size and divide, just like cells. This active droplet behavior differs from passive, more familiar tendencies of oil droplets and water, which climb together in bigger and bigger droplets without ever dividing. Now, there's some redundancy. If chemically active droplets can grow in su to set size and divide on their own accord, it makes it more plausible that there could have been spontaneous emergence of life from non-living soup, said Frank. Julia Kerr, biophysicist and Dresden, co-authored a new paper. The findings reported in Nature Physics last month may paint a possible picture of life's start by explaining how cells made daughters, said Zwicker, who is now a postdoctoral researcher at Harvard University. This is, of course, key if you want to think about evolution. Luca Giomi, a theoretical physicist at Leiden University in the Netherlands, studies the pos possible physical mechanisms behind the origin of life 
some new proposals significant simply significantly simpler than other mechanisms of protocell division that have been considered calling it a very promised direction. However, David Deemer, a biochemist at the University of California, Santa Cruz, a longtime champion of membrane proofs hypothesis, argues that while the newfound mechanism of droplet division is interesting, its relevance to the origin of life remains to be seen. Mechanisms is a far cry, you know, from the complicated multi step process by which modern souls divide. Yeah, that's an understatement. If you've ever studied mitosis, you know it is a very complex process. There's like five phases. Um, this is just a chicken and egg argument. These people don't know. I don't know either. However, I am... There's one thing I'm absolutely convinced of, and what I'm convinced of is that there has been some kind of a guiding hand in our creation. I will not accept that everything is an accident. I'm sorry, I won't do that. I'm not saying there's some uh, old guy with a white beard sitting on a throne and whisked everything into existence, because I don't know. I'm an agnostic. But this idea all this just came together by accident. I'm not buying this. And they don't tell you, you know, they don't even have a, any kind of a chemical formula for the early primordial soup, as they call it. They don't know. I mean, we would have to go back long, long ways and find out how this is happening. Before we would know. That's just the way it is. Oh well. That's your mad science update for today. <sighs> These people are nothing if not kooky. We don't know where we came from. That's the truth. That's why I'm happy to... Uh, even entertain a creation myth rather than listening to these people. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Thanks for watching.